Welcome back to Down the Stretch, everyone. I'm Mark Asano. Our thanks to Bruce Levine for having joined us. And you just took a look at the Schuylerville where Jardin for Steve Asmussen. He also had Ocean Colors. And Robbie Alvarado, she won off by four at 12 to one. Our next guest this morning is in Racing's Hall of Fame, and he has a very intriguing filly set for this afternoon's very intriguing renewal of the Diana. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer Jonathan Shepard. Jonathan, welcome back to Down the Stretch. Thank See you, Jonathan. You know, Jonathan, right, wrong, or indifferent, when I think about Augusta Stable and Jonathan Shepard, I think of marathons on turf. You went and bought a daughter of Belong to Me, and she became a stakes-winning sprinter. What's that all about? Um, what's that expression about a blind pig? <laughs> uh, sometimes these horses live a commas. But I, I've had luck sometimes with horses that were through a two-year-old in training sale regimen, which is Philly. In other words, she had had several fast eights and quarters thrown into her training before I got her. And um, so then it was a question of kind of unwinding her a little bit, but she already kind of knew how to do that part, which made my job that much easier. It took you nine starts to try her on turf, and we are about to see her turf debut mm -hmm. in the May 17th reluctant guest from mm -hmm. Arlington Park. Folks, she's the only gray in the field, and she's in the green and white Augustan stable silks. Why'd you make the decision at this point to move her to turf? Uh, she kind of lost her way a little bit last winter. You know, she had a very good campaign in the beginning of her three-year-old spring uh, at Gulfstream and then again at Keeneland. And then we ran her, I think, possibly in retrospect, not in a very smart decision in a distance race at Delaware. And I don't think she was quite ready for it. And uh, she didn't run well. She didn't come out of it very well mentally or physically. And we kind of had to regroup. Took her back to Florida where she had done well, you know, originally. Gave her a couple of runs, and she seemed like her temper was getting the better of her. She didn't like the dirt in her face. In the meantime, we sort of tried to teach her to rake a little bit and come from off the pace. So she wasn't really used to getting that much dirt. And I, it just seemed like we weren't on a good track. And I thought, well, you know, let's freshen her up, go somewhere different, try something different. We took her to Keene, and I thought maybe I'd find a little allowance race for her over there. I entered in two or three, and she didn't, none of them filled. And we're not too far from Chicago there, and she seemed to be training extremely well on the poly track at Keeneland and seemed happy there, moving sounder, happier mentally. So we took her up there, a little bit as an experiment. There was quite a bit of turf in the pedigree. And um, sure enough, as you just saw, she won rather nicely, came from off the pace and won going away on a yielding turf yeah. course. And uh, then we thought, well, you know, she's absolutely at a very peak, back as good as she's ever been. If ever we're going to try a big race, she's already a Group 2 winner. What have we got to lose by trying in Group 1? If it doesn't come off, we can always go back to doing what we did before. So we took her to Belmont. I think she was 45 to 1, and she ran her eyeballs out. Sure well, we're about we're to take a, take a look, look at, at the that. Just a yeah. Game, and wow. she is number 6 <clears throat> in here. Jonathan, often when horses step on grass, or race on grass, for the very first time, it's easier on them if the turf is firm. But in Chicago, as you mentioned, it was yielding and you had the young man early fires ride for you that <laughs> afternoon. What did he have to say to you after that race? Um, he, he was further back than he meant to be because he got uh, into trouble going to the first turn. He almost clipped heels. And uh, he, he actually was very impressed with her. He said she, she just handled beautifully after that and won with a little bit left. And well, now um, here is the Just a Game from Belmont Stakes Day. And you will be you will rally from far back early, saving some ground on the turn to rally for third. Uh, Ramon Dominguez rode for you this day. Talk about this performance, if you would. Uh, that was really a pretty dazzling performance. She settled nicely in at the back of the pack, as you can see. She's on the inside here. She had to wait for racing room a little bit, turning for home, and maybe even had to check slightly. Once she got clear, split horses. She she took a few strides to kind of really get into overdrive, which is understandable since they ran exceptionally fast and they were very good horses and they weren't backing up uh, but she really closed extremely well and um, Ramon told me after the race he said he thought if he'd been able to get running room exactly when he wanted it he might possibly have won the race well that's you know pretty outstanding performance because these are very good horses a lot of the same ones are running back this afternoon mm -hmm. now Jonathan just because a horse rallies in this case at a mile does it necessarily mean they're going to be able to get nine furlongs 
and she is by belong to me. From what you've seen from her training, from what early fires and Ramon Dominguez have said to you in riding the her in those two grass races, what are your feelings about nine furlongs over a less than firm course this afternoon? Well, it will be a, certainly a bigger test of stamina, and that's something that you don't really know until you try. Um, I think if La Perouse riding her today, if he can get her to settle nicely early, switch off and come with a late run, I don't think the distance will be a problem, but you know, when you try something you haven't tried before, you never know for sure. Um, she has, she's by, um, out of a mare by relaunch, which indicates stamina. Uh, I guess belong to me would be kind of middle distance. I think he's the son of Danzig. So um, I'd say she, she probably ought to be able to get this trip um, if he's able to get her to relax and, you know, and, and then move when he wants to. How did she come out of the Just the Game and how has she been training up to this afternoon's Diana? She came out of Just the Game well, but then we did have some problems with her. Um, she doesn't handle the hot weather very well. We had a series of heat waves down in Pennsylvania. She was mostly being trained on the farm a few days here and there at Delaware Park. Um, she doesn't particularly like Delaware because she was there when she was going through that bad spell last summer. Uh, she really doesn't particularly like to train there um, to the point that sometimes she almost refuses to gallop, has to get a pony to kind of get her to move off. Um, so that didn't seem like it was working that well. So I thought, well, uh, but we were still on track to run her in the sort of prep for the Beverly D, which is called the Modesty Stakes, run over the same course at Arlington that she had won previously. So I thought, well, that makes sense, keep her where she's winning. Um, we found about maybe 10 days before that race, she had uh, some mucus uh, in one nostril, and uh, we got her examined by the vet. He said she had he, what he guessed was a sinus infection. We had the treater for that, light training for a few days, so that kind of messed up our schedule. So we kind of redirected our efforts and planted her here instead. And um, she has actually had a very nice work here. I uh, would have preferred to work her on the turf, but as you know, as everybody knows, sure. we had nothing but rain all last week. The turf course wasn't open, so we worked her. I fortunately, made a, a, a good guess uh, trying to decide what to do with her and I worked her early on the Oklahoma dirt track um, on Wednesday there was at that time it hadn't really started raining we thought it was a chance they might have the turf and I thought well if we wait for the turf and they don't have it and then we're going to be on what will probably be a sloppy track let's take her out early which we did she worked extremely well I was delighted with her and she's acted good since good well for a filly who doesn't really handle hot weather too terribly well, I guess it's appropriate that I send you to my partner, who also <laughs> doesn't, doesn't handle <laughs> extremely hot weather too well, Michael. Jonathan, I'm glad to see you this morning. And one thing on your filly, and then another question, but w when a filly starts her career as beautifully as she did last year, I mean, was it hard to let go? Was it really, even though it was several races later, was it hard to give up the idea, she, the idea she'd come back to that form? Uh, you very often, particularly with fillies, I think you know the, you, they, 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 they hold their form for a period, and when they lose it, very often they never really re recapture that. Yeah. And I thought that was a definite possibility, and that's why we thought, well, I don't think if we just proceed along the same path we've been going, we're not gonna, it's not going to work. We need to do something different, and maybe we'll get lucky. Okay. And um, thus far, you know, she's come through. Yeah. She's, she's now. Uh, uh, a stakes winner at four, and she's group one place, so that's, um, you know, a, a big plus. Absolutely uh, understood. Jonathan knows that uh, when Smithwick and Turf Riders time comes around, that I'm going to come around his <laughs> barn, so t tell our audience, who am I going to interview you for this year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks like a, an old name that's been running up here for the last several years, mixed up. No kidding. Oh, he's sort <laughs> of right. a big gun. He's nine now. <laughs> yeah. Um, we did have a couple of others that we were kind of hoping, but they, they came up with problems. A uh, nice young horse called Sovereign Duty, who won the big race at Keeneland this spring, mm -hmm. and uh, looked like a, you know, sort of a new name in the, the, the higher echelon of our sport. But um, he's not going to make it, so we're going to go with uh, what we have left, and that's Mixed Up, who um, won the race last year, I believe. Did. <laughs> uh, he's a nice horse. Uh, he's maybe lost a step. Uh, unfortunately, he's burdened with pretty big weights because he had a big year last year. He won two valuable races. Uh, he won the big race at Keenan in the spring, and then he won the A.P. Smithwick up here. 
and it's sort of done on allowance conditions. He doesn't get much weight off. He'll be giving weight to some pretty nice horses.